Hey everyone, welcome to a Render Spaz video tutorial. And today I'm going to show you how you can create um, automotive grill isolated shots for um, automotive illustration, uh, whatever it is that you want to use for your uh, portfolio, just to make something look kind of slick, uh, nice macro shots of the grill. Sometimes you, you see these in uh, automotive magazines and uh, other uh, ads and what whatnot. So, um, I'm going to show you uh, a quick way you can do it using uh, V-Ray GPU uh, or V-Ray RT GPU. I've been getting a lot of uh, requests about using uh, uh, GPU in general, so I'm going to um, provide this video tutorial for you guys so you guys can see how it's done using uh, GPU power. All right, so what I have here is a uh, an Audi um, using the grill because I love the detail of it and um, and also the rings. It's just a nice nice look um, and I'm just going to briefly go over uh, it's pretty straightforward but uh, I'm going to show you a way I would go about it on uh, creating a nice looking grill shot uh, for an automotive illustration purposes um, the uh, the look we're going for here is we're looking for something like this where we have light hits coming out from either side right or left uh, it's showing the grill quite nice like the, the, the mesh uh, showing off the chrome, a little bit of the car paint, and then uh, we're also looking at the emblem. All right, so here's one look that I am looking at that I wanna go for, for this. Okay, we also have um, some other looks here. This is a smaller image, but you can see this one's just kind of like a, a very simple light. It's very dark scene, and then we got this one light hit coming across, which is pretty, pretty unique. It's very dramatic, and that looks really nice. Uh, slick way of uh, just revealing uh, a car brand or whatnot so that one's good and then the other look I'm going for this is not even a car emblem uh, but what I like about this okay uh, is the light glow that we uh, see around it here so where the reflections are we're seeing this nice kind of like little glow fall off and I, I want to go for that vibe as well and obviously uh, V-Ray is gonna help us uh, get those results Okay, so we also have the depth of field, which actually uh, we're gonna, I do have a Benz model as well. Uh, I might get into that in this video tutorial, we'll see. Uh, but what I do like about this is the depth of field. We can see how shallow it is over here on the, uh, on the left side. And it's just focusing on that emblem. Okay, and um, I've done many of these uh, shots before and I just love uh, using them and I like um, the result that I get. So let's get to it and um, we'll start by looking at our scene right now. What I've done was I set up um, a, just a split uh, view of um, pretty much both perspective. Uh, but this one here on the right is going to be my V-Ray RT window. So I'll come over to our perspective. I'll come down to extended viewport and then I'm gonna go right where it says here active shade. We're gonna check that guy on and it'll just load up. And then I'll go over the settings with you guys. Okay. So right now we're using um, we're using uh, all the materials here are applied as V-Ray. Uh, we're gonna go to our render setup, and um, we're already at our RT window. Okay, I'm using a trace depth of 16. I'm gonna leave the ray bundle size as is right now. Uh, 192 sounds good for me. All right, and whoop, have a little save here. Um, and then I just check the warnings off because I don't want those guys in the, in the shot right now. Okay, so that's pretty much it. It's pretty straightforward. I'm running a uh, GTX 690, so I have a dual uh, uh, GPU inside here, or inside the GPU, and uh, it's working quite nice. Um, I have them both running right now, so I might get a little choppy in the viewport, all depending on what I'm dropping in the scene. Okay, so let's get started. And what I want to do is uh, I got to start off with getting a ground plane in there. So we're going to go to our standard uh, primitives. Okay, we're going to use a plane. I'm not going to be able to use the V-Ray plane I've, since the V-Ray GPU uh, does not support it at the moment. I'm sure it will in the future. Okay, and I'm just going to bring this guy up a little bit so that we see the tires come through. 
Okay, I'm not going to be really focusing on the ground too much because um, we're not going to even really see it. It is going to be a little bit in the background, but um, it's not really the main focus of the shot. Okay, so right now we have standard lights. I'm going to get a material here real quick. I'm going to use uh, this gray. Okay, that's all it is. It's just a simple gray material. Okay, and then what I want to do is um, I'm going to bring in... Uh, you can have your own setup, but I'm for me, I'm going to use a um, a light rig from uh, or light model from uh, Car Studio Kit. So I'm going to bring that guy in. Okay, and this is already going to give me a, a quick light setup. So once I lay this guy down, there we go. Okay, let's just bring this uh, light back up a bit. Okay, we already have something quite nice. might need to do some adjustments on the paint okay um, just because it's not it looks a little dull right now so I can fix that let's lighten this guy up a bit I'll give myself a little bit more strength in the gloss. Okay. All right, so now that we got our light model in, we already have a simple uh, light setup. We can almost go with just this, but I'm going to add some additional lighting in just a moment. All right, so we start to. Uh, kind of get a rough idea of what we're looking at here. But what I need to do is add a camera. And another thing I want to do is go to our object properties here. Let's go to our general tab. And I'm just going to make this not visible to the camera. This way we're not going to see our uh, softbox. Okay. And we're going to um, Actually, one more thing in the object properties, we want to make sure that we let's display this as box. This way we can uh, see our camera in the scene, okay? So now we're going to go over to our uh, camera tab here. We'll go under standard and we'll look for V-Ray. We'll drag over a V-Ray physical camera. And now we can work from this camera from here on out. All right, let's get in there. Maybe uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come to the exposure section here. I'm just going to check that off. Okay, I'm not going to have any of the uh, special the effects here. It's going to say special effects, uh, bokeh effects. Definitely want those. I'm going to go to nine blades. Uh, depth of field, we'll check that on in just a moment, but we're just going to settle in with our shot. Okay, I'm going to go to a shaded mode here, and let's just ch start to work with, uh, with our camera here. So, what I'm looking at here is, to me, this is there's not a lot of uh, a wide distortion here with the lens. So, we're looking at probably a 50 mil lens here. Or a 50. Seems about right. Okay, we begin. Be, we can begin to um, see what kind of uh, look we're going for here. You want the light in the shot? It's kind of neat too sometimes, but it's not about the light. So I'm trying to keep the rings somewhat. I guess you can. They could be a little bit in the middle, but just maybe slightly off. Okay, maybe we see the other light. That's kind of cool. All right. Something like this. We're going to do the uh, looking up at it. For some reason, we're still seeing our uh, sky box here. I don't know, or our skylight softbox. The reason why we're seeing that 
quite interesting. It's, yeah. Uh, there. Whoops. What did I do here? All right, there we go. For some reason, that was just acting a little strange. But we're back with it. So, um, I don't know about the looking up at the emblem, so maybe I just want to come across. That's not bad. Oh, something like this. All right, I got to make up my mind up somewhere along the line. And then maybe I want to adjust my light up top just a bit. Um, let's see what we can do with this guy. If we tilt it just a bit down, you know, we start getting a little bit of lights hitting off the side here. That looks actually really nice. You see a nice fall off here as well. Okay, so that's doing a splendid job. Um, we're also lacking a little bit of light here on the side. So what we can do is we can um, we can go in and add a simple V-Ray light uh, plane. To just kind of give us a little bit of help here. So I'll go to V-Ray light and um, I'll drag out a plane here. Okay, we can just turn this a bit. Okay. Okay, so now we're just going to set this guy up in a spot where it lights it up. But now what we have to do is make sure that uh, now that we're lighting that one side up, we have to um, check our effect specular and reflection, and there we start to get that nice little hit there. Um, but also what we want here is we want to be able to uh, soften this up. This is a little bit too sharp, and that's why I set up uh, these light uh, soft boxes that are done in uh, Car Studio Kit so that they are nice and natural reflections. So we're getting some really realistic uh, results with these. Uh, V-Ray lights uh, on their own really kind of give you that hard hit. So um, what I can do to trick this is use a, let's go to the, our material editor here. Okay, and then we can just drag a gradient map onto our, um, See if I can grab you here onto our V-Ray light. So I'll come over to V-Ray texture, drag this guy right onto that slot as an instance, hit OK, and now it just softens it up a bit. And then uh, I can obviously, if I want, bump my resolution up just a just a bit. Uh, we might be a little bit hot there, so what we got to do is uh, just tone this guy down. We'll go about one point three, and then uh, we can. Play with the temperature a bit. Okay, we can maybe go to a, like a bluish. Okay. That's looking pretty good. I might go to 1.8. Move this guy around just a bit more here just to see what kind of results we can get. It's actually really nice. I still want it to be overpowering. I want you to be focusing on the rings, not on this. So if I go 1.2, yeah, I'll dull that down a bit. That's not too bad. Okay, so now that we have a nice light set up, what we can do here is go to our V-Ray physical camera. Okay, let's um, go down towards our settings where we had our bokeh effects and then we have our sampling and then we're going to use our depth of field. So we'll turn that on and we'll go up to our, let's see here, our specified focus. We'll check that guy on. And now we can start to put these rings in focus and blur out the edges. So I think everything's going to slow down a little bit here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is drag our focus distance to the rings. Kind of bring these up a bit. 
Okay, and what we got to do is we want more blur going on here. We want more blur on the uh, on the edges, and we want to focus on this on the ring, and then uh, have some more blur over here as well. Okay, in the bottom uh, left. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our F number here, and we gotta drag this down. The lower that we drag this down, the more blur you're gonna get. So as you can see, I'm tightening up. You can see where the um, the light blue lines are here. That's our focus uh, fall off, and then our deep blue plane that you see is our focus point. So if I drag this guy down, we're starting to tighten it up and it's starting to become more blur on the edges. And you can see that result happening in real time here. And it gives us that really, really cool effect uh, that you see in a lot of uh, photography these days. A lot of times if you look at macro photos, you'll see the blur. Uh, and that's what we're doing here. Uh, I want this actually now to be a little bit brighter this uh, light here on the on the right side of the car so because now that we've added the blur it kind of softened it I might want it to be a little bit more of a highlight so we can go back to this uh, light and uh, we'll bring it back up to maybe I don't know one six okay just to get it a little bit brighter there all right and that's pretty much it I mean that's that's pretty much set up, right? So now all we really have to do at this point is um, we can start uh, setting up a final render. So let's start doing that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get pause this guy out or close it. Come into this viewport by Alt W and you can uh, maximize your screen or your viewport, sorry. And then from there we're going to go to rendering, render setup. And we're going to move on over to uh, let's see here production mode, and then from there uh, we got to find where our render is, which is I think it's already set on RT. I'm going to common assign render. Yes, yeah, so we're already set to V-Ray RT as our production. So that's great, because we want to use the uh, V-Ray frame buffer. So that way we can start going down like we do on a normal uh, V-Ray setting that you would do in your production without RT. And we can now um, begin to look at our RT settings here. So we can go to our trace depth. We'll put that to 16. Um, 192, maybe... Uh, 246. Okay, we'll make sure our, we're not having any warning messages coming up. I'm going to leave the texture size at 512. That's good. Uh, right now, I got it set for 800 uh, pass per pixel. So, 800 times it, it's, or 800 max paths it will take. Uh, you can also set up a time if you want, but I feel like 800 would be enough. I'm going to go to 1,000 just to be safe. Uh, and I was going to do a 720, but for this for this uh, render, I'm going to do I'm going to do about 1,500, okay? So 1,500, we're, we're using uh, 16 by 9, which is uh, HD uh, TV video output size. We're going to hit render. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to just let this render out and I'll pause the video and then we'll return with a final product and then we'll start to do a little bit of tweaks. All right. Okay, so with 800 or 1,000 uh, pass per pixel. I've got a little bit of um, noise going on. If I would have let this render a little longer, I probably would have had a, obviously would have had a more um, softer image, but I believe I can work with this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to our uh, color correction, and um, we're gonna start giving this a look and feel. We can use the color corrections within V-Ray to, um, to give us a little bit more, uh, something more interesting than, than just the uh, 
this gray image here. All right, so what we're gonna do is come down to where it says curves. Let's click on this guy and whoa, before I get into that, we just need to make sure we're not uh, sliding across our curve uh, grid here. Okay, so we're gonna bring down just a bit of the darks. We can bring up some of the highlights. So as you see, we're getting some uh, changes here up in the, uh, the hood area. And I also might want to do my mids as well. So if I hold control, I can click and I get a point. Uh, and then I can adjust the mids area here. Shred Bezier smooth. Okay, I just want to see a little bit of detail here on the top. Okay, so that helps a bit. Bring up our exposure a little. See if we have a little bit of room for that. Okay, and then we also have our color balance, and this is where we can start adding just a bit of color in. Uh, if you want a colder look with the blue, you can do that. If you want a warmer, you can go with the, uh, the red. Okay, you just want it very subtle, but just enough to make it look uh, dramatic. Okay. Something like that, like a steel blue. That'll work for me. Uh, levels are good. So there's not really too much... Um, too much here in this part. This is good because we did add some color and we got a little bit of a uh, more dramatic look to this. Uh, what we can do now is go over to our lens effects and this is where we're going to start applying the uh, bloom and everything else that uh, comes with a nice glare and bloom uh, that will just give us some more punch to our image. So we got kind of this look here but now we're going to go and add some uh, bloom effects. And this really just already enhanced the image quite a bit. We've got to adjust this a bit. So if I bring the size down a bit, I'm starting to uh, get away the softness. So it's just really kind of playing with this a bit. You want subtlety. Uh, you don't want you don't want it to be overdone. You know, you just don't want it to be uh, something like this. It's just very foggy. It almost looks like a foggy lens. Almost like the lens got dirty. Um, it's very dre dreamy looking, um, but you just want some subtlety here. That goes a long way, so I'll bring the weight down just a bit, and that can kind of calm it down. But you can see the nice hits off the hood. And So the one thing you've just got to be aware of is just the longer your renders, uh, you let this render go, the more you'll get the grain removed. The image will look a lot better. Uh, this is a thousand pass at 1500 pixels, right? And um, which is quite quite high res here. So, uh, and it only took me, um, oh geez, I think it was only a minute or two to render this. So, pretty good. Uh, and then we're using some uh, a little bit more of a technical light rig above. So, this is looking pretty good. I'm happy with what I have. You can mess around with the shot more. You could even now you can get um, different kinds of shots as well once you have one look. So we can save this image out, say. If I just um, duplicate the frame buffer. Okay, so I have this guy. Okay, I can save this camera. by, uh, and We can add another camera, but what I want to do is select this guy first. Make sure I have the settings place because I want to keep the same settings for this next camera. Click on the V-Ray physical camera. We can go right straight ahead now. All right, we can get something unique like this. Maybe showing this side. We show the rings. This, we, we just clip the, uh, the light a bit. Okay, right. All right, something like this. 
Go to our top view, make sure we are in focus. Something like that. Hit render, and we'll have a, a new shot. And then we'll apply these settings as well. You know, we might see now this is this is an issue. Uh, yes, we got some nice light up here, but now I want to light the um, the rings from the front. So we might have to set up a separate light for this shot. So I'll do that. Why not? For a bonus. It's not going to take me long. Okay, so let's go back to our RT here. Okay, and so I'm just trying to think. How do I want to... Uh, to get this reflection, we could try using another V ray light. So, if I use this guy here, okay, so I'll just dr shift drag out. Let's make a duplicate of this guy. And now, right, you can see I'm starting to get. Some light on this guy on the grill. It's pretty nice. That's interesting. Uh, might want to tone down the light a bit. I might want it to be a little bit bigger. Something like that. Could add another light. Now the thing is, be aware that if you're setting up this shot, okay, that you have in the front, you want to make sure that you're setting up these lights prior to this shot so that if you're going back to your first shot, you're not going to want these lights turned on because you already have that shot set up. So um, you might want to layer these guys together so that these these lights go with the second camera. If that makes sense, okay? So because then I can it can get messy. So you just want to be organized uh, when it comes to actually doing your shots here. But if you're just toying around, I guess it's not that big of a deal. If you're doing client work, uh, you want to make sure you have this stuff saved out or uh, organized as best you can. Okay, so I like that. I get a little light hit here. Um, and it's just showing off the rings. We can uh, go and post and uh, fix the rest here. I might just bring this down just a bit. seeing a lot of plate right now that's okay I guess you know just for uh, this time being we can got the plate here but that's okay all right so once you have that shot set up we can now render it out final let's close this guy render setup and uh, hit render Hopefully everything works okay. All right, so uh, just wait the shot out. I'll pause uh, the video and then we'll return with their final product. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, it has applied the uh, lens effects and also we have the color corrections are also added. 
Uh, so we pre pretty much got two shots out of this. We have this grill shot here, and we got this guy right here. So that's how fast you can uh, adjust the cameras or move, make, create more cameras and get different uh, variations of the grill. All right, so guys, that concludes this video, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. You learned something from it, and you can take this to good use and um, start making some uh, cool uh, automotive grill shots. Okay, guys, don't feel, feel free to uh, comment below, uh, and also uh, check more of my video tutorials at uh, www.renderspass.com, and uh, we'll catch you later in the next tutorial. All right, see you later.